Is PowerPoint Presenter Coach the answer to your stage fright? Microsoft claims that their built-in Presenter Coach can help you eliminate amateur mistakes and improve your delivery. To Academy Award level? I don't know. Let's see. I'm going to walk you through three different presentation styles to understand how the built-in tools of Presenter Coach works in real life. Hi, I'm Les McCarter and I've been teaching and presenting with PowerPoint since the 1990s. PowerPoint Presenter Coach is now everywhere, on Windows, on Mac, even on your phone, and online with Office 365. I'm gonna run through three different styles of presentations with the Microsoft Presenter Coach giving me advice along the way. Together, you and I are gonna look at the results and with your own ears and eyes, you can judge how good the advice is. So I'm working within this little green screen and over here is my actual PowerPoint presentation. So you're gonna see me speak and present at the same time. So let's go ahead and give this a try and you let me know which one you think works. We're gonna power up and get you started. Here's our first presentation. I'm gonna run through it it's gonna probably be the worst of the three, and I'm not gonna be using the script or structured talking points, but instead, I'm gonna just wing it, using the bullet points as I see them pop up on the screen. Note that I do have to go at least 60 seconds to get a base score from the presenter coach, and I'm gonna to need to exaggerate my presentation style to set off the coaching tips. Hold on while I get it started. You'll see that I'm over here on my present on my screen. You can see my little green screens over here. I'm going to go ahead. I'm in slideshow and I'm going to choose rehearse with coach. Let me click it. It puts me back in my presentation and down here I'm going to click and we're going to get going. So here goes tips to making a great presentation. Okay, guys, this is my presentation, and I think of some things that you guys need to know. So uh, let's just take a look. Here are the three keys to a presentation. You ready? Okay. The first one, a goal. Without a goal, of without a goal of why you're making this presentation, why even do it? It's going to waste your time and your audience's time if you don't know what the goal of the presentation is. So determine what you're going to do first. Once you have your goal, you then need to create a story arc. A story arc is like making the goals take place. You're going to create a beginning and a middle and end to kind of prove what you want to achieve in your goal. Then once you've got your story arc, you then need to marry up your partnership of your visuals and your auditory. You want the words on the slides to speak and match uh, um, so they know each other. You know what I mean? The idea here is to make sure that everything kind of works together. Lastly, you gotta have something called a call to action. A call to action is where you tell people why they're listening to this. It's kind of reinforcing the goal of what you're trying to do of your presentation. Because if you don't call to action, once again, you kind of wasted your opportunity. So after that, you gotta practice uh, and, and and maybe maybe practice some more. And if that's not enough, you, you might you might want to think about using the Microsoft Presenter Coach. Okay, let's me close this out. I'm gonna hit the escape key. It's then gonna pop up with the report. And let's take a look at what the report is telling us here. Uh, basically, it said we did a good job. Um, we spent about a minute and 45 seconds. Later on, we'll talk a little more about how you should probably optimize this to not to be more than one minute per slide. Uh, they said that basically um, I need to get rid of some of my filler words and you heard the ums and the ahs. I didn't catch all of them. Um, the you guys, has said I should probably suggest it to you. The words per minute, 136. Some people speak too slow, too fast. That gives us good peace. And it shows us the pace over time that we kind of were in the target, but you can see that we varied up and down here. Uh, for the most part, we didn't use any of the slides. If I go down here, um, we kind of avoided reading the slides in that case, although you could tell I was reading the slides as we go forward. So I'm gonna close this down and let's do the next one. Okay, let's do this a second time around. We're gonna use a little slightly different slide. 
And I'm going to be using what I call a set of structured talking points, which I'm going to show over here on the screen once I edit this video before putting it up on YouTube. What the structured talking points are a little more elaborate than the bullet points that you see on the presentation to make sure that I cover all the pieces. I've actually practiced this, so I should run a little more smoothly. With that, I'm going to go ahead and start the recording. And here we go. The very first part of any presentation is to know your goal. If you don't know your goal before you even begin the creation of your presentation, you don't even know where you're going. So how's your audience going to understand what they're supposed to understand? So nail down that goal before you get going. Once you got your goal firmly in your head, then you can start to create the story arc in the slides that you're creating. Like a great movie or a novel, what you want to do is you want to make sure that you have a beginning, a middle, and the end. The beginning is the goal that you're going to announce up front. The middle is where you're going to develop all your ideas. And the end is when you're going to actually start to make sure that you call for the answer of what you bring up inside your presentation. Before you actually make the presentation, the next thing you need to do is to look through your presentation and the words. You need to think that the words and what you're going to say are going to match. You need to have them work in unison, but not be identical. Once you got your presentation put together, you need to make sure at the very end that you have what we call the call to action. You got to ask the question to make sure that your audience are buying in, because if you are not asking the question and not achieving the goals of your presentation, then why even give it? Okay, let's see how that turned out. Now we look through here, once again, 90 seconds, maybe a little long, and I rambled a bit, but I did cover all the points uh, because I had an idea of what I was speaking. I didn't have any fillers. I had no sensitive phrases along the way. My pace was, once again, at a pretty good pace. And you can see here, it's a little more consistent, not much, but a little more consistent than what we had in our previous one. The pitch, you can see that I had my pitch that kind of went up and down, so there was a variety to it, and I did avoid reading the slide out loud. So let's do this. We're going to rehearse and go on to the next one, which is going to be our final presentation. And our last test is going to be based on me working from a much practiced and written script. This is where I plotted out my words and my voice inflections in advance. So let me get this started and we'll see how this is going to go. How do you best prepare for an onstage presentation? It depends on your comfort on stage and experience with working with PowerPoint. The decision that you need to make is what's most effective. The most effective way for precision is to write a script to work from. That will help you be your most eloquent and keep you from missing any key points. But it does require the upfront work and writing and then memorization, plus lots of practice to nail down the script and the voice and the drama. If you're comfortable with talking points, that's an alternative. The talking points in front of a group is going to let you elect to use the strategy of talking to the people and not from a script. This is not winging it. It's a practice memorization of your key points and using the slides to keep you on track. It also requires practice, but if done correctly, it will appear more natural in a group presentation. Did I remind you to practice? And yes, practice and practice and practice some more. Having a trusted friend to give a critical feedback is a great way to practice. But if you have no trusted friends or no one available at 3 a.m. the night before the presentation, then think about using Microsoft's PowerPoint Presenter Coach to give a different perspective on your presentation. Okay, let's see how that turned out. Look through here. And once again, still maybe a little long, but we basically had no filler words. 
There were no sensitive phrases because it was scripted and we made sure that we eliminated those. The pace was once again pretty consistent. You can see here in this case here, the pace was really right in that mark towards the upper end. I tend to talk a little fast and that's just my style. If we look at the pitch, you can see the pitch kind of did very up and down. So once again, that worked very well for us and we didn't read the slides along the way. So in this particular situation, the scripted version, I believe worked best but let's see what you think. Okay, in summary, our goal was to determine how good presenter coach is in giving you actionable advice. Reviewing my three sample presentation styles, which did you like the best? Leave your thomas thoughts in the comments below. Did you like the one, the winging it version or the structured speaking points or the scripted version? And did the coach agree with you? For the most part, the tool does provide some interesting information, including pace and voice and inflection variations and the average time per slide. But in my opinion, it's just a starter. You need a live critic to listen and give you feedback. But the biggest advantage is that it forces you to practice and practice and practice. So, to wrap up, do you want to get better at PowerPoint? Power of Training has dozens of free tutorials on our YouTube channels, such as getting ready for going on stage, or how to design and write compelling slide decks, or digging more into script versus no script. Subscribe to our channel and share with your coworkers. Do leave your vote in the comments on your favorite version of these three presentations. And until next time, co-power up your presentation skills. But please, don't forget to practice.